Hi everybody and welcome back to another episode of STEM with Dr. Eels. So today we're going to be doing a rubber band powered car and we're using the same concepts we used for the helicopter which you can see in my previous video where we're using a rubber band to store potential energy and then releasing that energy as kinetic energy to make our car move. Now this is a really fun project but you do need a few more materials than usual and it really does work best if you have a hot glue gun. You could probably use PVA uh, but it won't be as strong. Okay, so let's get set up and show you what you'll need to make this car. Okay, so here's a list of materials you're going to need for today. Got a hot glue gun. Now these do get very hot, so make sure you're very careful with this, or ask for help if you need it. Scissors, straws, skewers to make the axles for our car. We've got some bottle caps we're going to try and use as wheels, and I've got some backup wheels if these don't work. Rubber bands. I've just shown you one here, a bigger rubber band that I'm going to try out. We could try some smaller ones as well. Again, you just have to test and see what you think will work. And we've got some paddle pop sticks to make up the body of our car. So we're going to start by gluing together the body of the car first, and then I'll show you how we can attach the wheels and the axles. What I'm going to do is make a rectangular body shape. So I'm going to cut one paddle pop stick in half, or close enough to, and use that for the front and the back of this body. And I'm just going to glue everything together in a rectangle like this and then add some more support if I think that I need it. Okay, so I'm just going to make the front axle for this first. And again, we're going to use a similar trick that we used previously on our balloon car, if you've seen that video, where you use a straw to act as a sleeve for your axle. So I'm just going to get a section of straw that fits across the front here, and I'm going to glue that to my paddle pop sticks and this is going to make up the front axle of this car. So I've got my bit of straw here and I'm just going to attach that to the front of this car. So you can see that that's just glued on to the front. Okay so then what you want to do to connect your wheels and your axle together is you want to make a small hole in the top of your bottle cap lid. You can use an open pair of scissors to do this so just be very careful make sure you're not going to slip with the scissors as you do this. You just want to make it big enough to put the axle into. I haven't put a hole all the way through this lid because it's quite tough, but this will be enough to hold my axle in place. I'm just going to reinforce this with some hot glue. So as you're assembling this, you just want to do one wheel and axle first, and then slide it through the straw before cutting it to size and attaching the other wheel. So let's let that glue dry, and then we'll add the other wheel. Okay, so to put my front axle and wheel assembly through, we just feed this through the straw. You want to leave yourself a little gap between the wheel and the straw. So I'm going to cut the rest of my axle to about here. Now, I'm going to take my other wheel and attach it and glue it in. And so we will have a front wheel and axle that will hopefully spin within this straw. Now this bit's going to be a bit difficult to attach. Try not to get glue on your straw as you're doing it. You can use another skewer to move the hot glue around if you need to as well. Okay, so once it's attached, you just want to sort of roll it back and forth and see if this is actually going to move. One thing you want to be wary of is having too much glue on the axle so it gets stuck within the straw. And also you can see on my left wheel here, it's a little bit wonky. It's actually perfectly straight, so you can see how it's curving as it turns. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fix that for now, but I'll try it and see how it goes, and if I need to redo it, I'll redo it. Okay, so I've ended up changing bottle lids for my back wheel because I was having too much difficulty cutting through those white lids. These are much softer. So I've cut through. This will allow me to put some glue on the inside to hold this stick in place, like so and that will hopefully remove some of that issue of having hot glue interfering with the axle and the straw. So again, I'm just going to glue one wheel in place first, and I'm going to cut my axle to shape. I'm going to have to show you a different trick for doing the straw for the back axle for this build. So while the glue's drying for my back axle, I'm going to attach these straws for them to feed through to the back of this car. And this time we actually want a couple of shorter pieces of straw because we need a gap in the middle, in between them. 
Now that's going to be really important because our rubber band is going to be in the centre of this and wrap around this rear axle and that's what's going to provide the power to make this car go. So I'm just going to get these straws a little more even and I'm going to glue them here so that there's plenty of space for this back wheel to wind away from this rear stick which is just adding support. So make sure you've got them the same distance and you can measure this out with a ruler to be 100% sure and then we're just going to glue these down. Try and make sure it's all straight so that your axle can feed through properly. So now to attach my rear wheels and axle, I just feed through these straws, through the other side, and I'm glue, gonna glue my other wheel on here. So I probably left a little too much stick on this axle, but with the way the rubber band attaches, it shouldn't move much left to right, so it won't matter if we have a bit of a wide back axle. So I'll let that dry, and we should have our four wheels ready to go. So again, you just want to give these a bit of a test roll and make sure your car's actually moving. You can see that this is rolling pretty well. Um, again, these wheels aren't super straight and really this is where taking your time and being really accurate will make a big difference. So I'm just trying to put something together to show you how to do this. But if I was going to take my time and do this properly, I'd probably measure things out a little more and just make sure that all your wheels and things are really super straight just to prevent some of that wobbling. But on the plus side, this is rolling, so this should work. Right, so our next step is we need to add some pieces for our rubber band to wrap around, and that's going to be what powers our car. So I'm going to cut a short section out the front here. Again, you can sort of estimate this, probably a couple of centimetres would be heaps. And we're going to place this right poking out the front for our rubber band to hook over. And use a fair bit of glue here because you really want to make sure that this is attached properly and that's nice and strong. So it will be under a fair bit of force or tension from that rubber band. Okay, so our next step is we need to attach a skewer to the centre of the axle here in the gap. And you want to have this skewer centred either side. So what this stick will allow me to do is wind the rubber band around this back axle. And so we wind it up tight and then when we let go, it should release and spin the back wheels and that'll let our car drive. Alright, so on the plus side, my car definitely moved, but you can see I've got two very different results depending on whether I was on lino or on carpet. This is because there's quite a bit of energy being stored up in these wheels, and they're plastic so they don't have a lot of grip, so we're not getting any friction between the floor and these wheels. So what you find when you put this on lino is it'll spin and it will skid, and it might gain a little bit of traction as you lose that energy and it slows down, but it doesn't really move far at all. Now on carpet there's a bit more grip between the wheels and the carpet which allowed my car to go a bit further than it would. So there's a few ways that you can deal with this. Uh, you could have rubber wheels or some sort of tread on this to allow it to grip better on the floor. You might have bigger wheels instead of smaller ones because it requires more energy to get bigger wheels started. But you might find that it goes further because once that's in motion those bigger wheels will usually let you cruise for a lot longer. You also might consider what sort of rubber band you're using and how much distance there is between the back axle here and the front. If you have a shorter distance, then you may not build up as much tension in the rubber band, which may not have as big a release, and that might allow your car to move a bit slower, but hopefully further. But it depends on what you're going for. If you want a really fast car, then having these smaller wheels and lots of tension in your rubber band will really keep it moving. The other thing you might consider doing is adding some weight to your car so that it needs a bit more energy to get moving and that might stop that initial slipping as well. 
Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. It'd be great to see other people building and sharing their own rubber band powered cars. Let me know how you go and I'll see you next time.